Hello, mindsetters, and welcome to the Winter Exam School. I'm Atik Mohammed, and today we're going to be doing some grade 11 physical sciences and chemistry uh, for the next hour. Now, I know you guys are busy with exams at the moment, so make sure that you're using the platform and posting your questions on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash mindset TV. Also, you can uh, send your questions through to our email, which is questions at learn.co.za. Now, we've posted a question on our Facebook page, so see if you can try and answer it, and we're going to do it later on in the show and see, you know, if you've got the answers correct. Um, having wasted no time, let's go over to Temba and see what he's got in store for us today. Hi, Temba. How are you doing? Hi, Atik. Thank you for having me uh, today. That's fantastic. Yeah. So today we're doing the chemistry as well as the physics, but essentially we know that uh, they'll be writing, uh, you know, their physics paper one, uh, which is tomorrow. Hopefully they are adequately prepared. So without any waste of time, uh, let's just let's get go into right it. on fantastic. to it. Uh, grade 11 out there, uh, it's, it's physics and chemistry once again. Uh, we we also want to uh, highlight the fact that uh, on this uh, uh, session today, we shall look into, you know, some aspects of chemistry as well as uh, the physics. So uh, hopefully, you know, the kind of questions that uh, you guys have sent through would be very much, uh, you know, helpful in terms of uh, uh, preparing yourselves, uh, you know, adequately for the exam. But we shall also discuss some of the tips, you know, we shall use the questions as well also to speak to some of the related concepts, you know, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, your physics as well as your chemistry. Now, the first question that we got is from Portia. Thank you very much, Portia, uh, for your contribution. We most certainly hope that uh, during this discussion, you know, the kind of feedback that uh, we give to you becomes very, very much uh, helpful. Now, the first question is a typical exam question. Thank you very much for that. It says, uh, the diagram below shows a rope and pulley system. Right, now this is a rope and pulley system. Now you want to think of this as a simple machine, right? So you'd remember uh, when you did your, you know, your, your, your technology in grade eight and nine, you spoke about levers, uh, which are simple machines. Now, uh, this is a device that is used to lift, so it does uh, uh, some work, you know, lifting ob objects over, you know, some vertical distance. And then it says um, it moves an object of that mass, so the mass is given to us is 122.5 kg, which is pretty much heavy. And then uh, it moves upwards at a constant velocity, right? This, this very, very, uh, you know, an important, you know, uh, implication of that part of the, of the context of the problem. When something moves at constant velocity, it means it moves, you know, at the same speed, if you want to, uh, you know, think of it. Now, it simply means that, um, that object is experiencing, you know, uh, what we call a zero net force, which speaks to a particular, you know, physics uh, principle, which we shall discuss uh, as we go along. Now, we shall assume that the ropes and the pulleys are light. Light, it means their mass is negligible, right? Mass is negligible. Right, meaning uh, we, 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 we're not going to take the mass of, 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 of the rope into account. The only mass now is of this uh, object that is being lifted, which is the container, negligible, right? Okay, so it's very insignificant. Instance, inextensible, it doesn't stretch. Now, the pulley is frictionless, meaning the pulley is very, very uh, smooth. So there is no frictional force in that uh, 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 pulley as a result of the rope moving uh, through it, right. Now, it says, the first question says, calculate the weight, right. Now, we come to think of, to, to ourselves and say, okay, weight, what is it? It's a vector quantity that we've discussed, you know, more often than once. And we, when we talk about a vector, in this case, this weight is a force, you know. A force is got magnitude as well as a, a, a direction. But we must understand that essentially, a force is exerted by something, you know, on an object. So in this case, this is um, force, which is FG, uh, which we sometimes abbreviate as uh, W. So the weight is the force exerted by, right? The force exerted, okay, by F on object, right? And in which direction is that? Um, it's vertically downwards. Right, let's remember that. But essentially, you will know that W is equal to mass of object multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, which is a constant. Now, I'll draw your attention very quickly to the table of physical constants. You know, uh, if you look at that, acceleration due to gravity, it's 9.8. There is our, our value of acceleration due to gravity. So need, you need to familiarize yourself uh, with this, uh, uh, you know, the formula sheet and the data sheet, know when to use it and how. Right, now let's quickly uh, do our substitution 
uh, we are given the mass. W in this case is going to be, the mass is 122, okay? 0.5 multiplied by 9.8. Basically, I, I think this uh, is one of the most straightforward questions, you know, one can uh, 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 get. So it's 122 multiplied by 9.8, which is a constant. Oh, it's 122.5, by the way, right? It's 0.5, okay? And then uh, that gives us um, 1,200, okay? Uh, it's 1,200.5, okay? 1,200.5. This is in newtons, and the weight is obviously uh, downwards, right? Unless the question says calculate the magnitude. Remember, that's magnitude as well as direction, right? Let's move on to the next question. Uh, on the, still on the same context, it says draw a vector diagram. Very, very important. Remember, vectors are essentially what they are. They represent, you know, uh, uh, the forces that act on an object. But let's also bear in mind that when we talk of these forces, uh, the key words that we need to pay attention to is that the force is exerted on the object by something, you know. If you look at the, the object in this case, um, the, the most straightforward one uh, that comes to mind is obviously the weight of uh, the container. So that weight is vertically uh, downwards, right? So that's the weight there, okay? And then these are the strings that are, are not stretching, hence we say they're inextensible. So if we may start for, for argument's sake, because you may be asked, you know, sometimes to draw the free body diagram, you know, it's basically, it represents the same kind of forces, uh, uh, you know, acting on the object, but how we represent them, it would differ, but it also, you know, uh, represents the same situation. So in this case, remember, uh, if it's a free body diagram, we're gonna have a dot, right? And then we shall use arrows, you know. So there's the weight of the object, all right? which is vertically downwards, right? So this is the weight, which is vertical downwards, exerted by F on the object. And then if you go back again, there's a force pulling the object um, as a result of tension, you know? And remember, this uh, is at an angle, you know, of 60 degrees to the vertical. The other one is at an angle of what? 30 degrees uh, to the vertical, right? Either way, uh, you, you, you measure it from the vertical to the tension force that is experienced. Now, if we can then go further and uh, represent those two tension forces, right? And then we have, uh, okay, let me use an arrow, okay, right? Then we have got, uh, that should be T2 as uh, depicted in the diagram there, right? So if that is T2, it's in that direction. So that's T2. And then we also have T1, which is pulling on the other end, you know, um, which acts on the object, right? That's the direction. Remember the arrows, they indicate the direction of uh, the force, right? So let's agree uh, the, 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 the angles to which these, um, uh, acting to the vertical are different, right? So if we draw that imaginary line, uh, which uh, represents, you know, the, the, you know, the, the vertical, it will give us something of that sort, just a moment. Okay, let me undo that quickly. Right, if we draw that uh, vertical line, which represents, you know, the, the, the vertical component, then it means that will be our 60 degrees, right? and that will be our 30 degrees, right? So that's our free body. But essentially, if we're gonna transform this into a vector diagram, now, let's agree, now we can draw a triangle of forces. Now, remember, in a triangle of forces, there are three, you know, uh, forces acting to, to, you know, to give us that uh, uh, shape, which is a triangle, which is closed, but also let's pay attention to the angles, right? And also the direction in which each one of those forces uh, particularly acts, right? Let's start with the, the, the weight, which is the most obvious one, okay? Right, let's, let's change that. Okay, let's start with the weight, okay? The weight is vertically downwards, which is our uh, FG, right? Let's start with our weight, which is uh, our FG, right? Okay, there we go, right? Then we take, uh, let's say that one, right? That's our weight, which is vertically downwards. So that force acts vertically downwards. Let's call it weight, or sometimes it can be referred to as FG, you know? It refers to the same force. And then let's take uh, 
the other force, which is uh, in this case, um, you know, the, the, the T2, which acts at that angle, right? It will give us uh, that uh, 60 degrees, right? Okay. So that force x in that direction. Mind you, I did not change the direction. It's still the same. It's still the same with the weight as, again, which, which is uh, the gravitational force. Let's have the other force so that we close that triangle of forces. You know, it becomes uh, something of this sort, right? Okay. It, it becomes uh, that kind of a force, uh, which is, let's draw a line there, okay? Uh, if we can use, uh, let's say, a different color, for, for argument's sake, okay. Uh, okay, so the technology there, okay. Okay, that's the other force, right. So that is acting in that, uh, or oh, rather in the opposite direction, okay, which is uh, our T1. And then this is our T2, right. Now, the angle between that, uh, those two, uh, that would be uh, 30 degrees, Right, and then that would be our 60 degrees, right, between the vertical and, and, and W. So that's 60 degrees, and then that's 30 degrees. So that's essentially our, our triangle of forces there, right. And then that's it, um, just to change the pain there, okay. Right, and then we have uh, the next question, uh, which talks to, you know, uh, Portia, you're still working on your question, which says determine the magnitude uh, of the forces T1 and T2. So we shall refer our, our you know, our calculations, we shall, shall be purely based on what we, we, we did in the previous one. Just to reproduce that uh, our, our triangle of forces, you know, we've got that, uh, uh, which is the weight, okay, that's W, and then we've got that force, which is uh, T1, Right, and then we've got that force, which is uh, T2, right. Now these two are perpendicular to each other because of the 30 and the 60. Uh, so if this is 30 degrees, that would be uh, 60 degrees. Now, remember, uh, if you go back to your geometry, you know, in grade eight and nine, you'd remember that when you have a right angle triangle, one of the angles must be 90 degrees, and the other two angles must be, have a total of uh, 90, which means they are complementary. Maybe that's the kind of language that we have used every now and again in our maths. So it's so, so a little bit of integration there. Right, so if we are to determine, you know, uh, what each of these are unknown, but we have our W, W in this case, uh, if we can, in place of W, we can have uh, what we've, we got, it, it was 1,200, right, 0.5 newtons vertically downwards, right. So we are only going to use, uh, you know, because we only have one side and all the interior angles of the triangle. So it takes us to our, you know, our sign rule. If you can think of it, it says, uh, you know, let's say in this case, we talk about uh, W, okay, over the angle which is opposite to W, which is the 90 degrees, which is sine uh, of 90 degrees, right? Must equal, um, let's take maybe T1, T1 and 60 degrees are opposite to each other. So T1 is opposite to, that's t our T1 is opposite to that angle. So for that reason, it's gonna be T1 over uh, sine of 60 degrees, right? Now, in this case, we can do our substitutions, and it's a pretty much straightforward question. It's going to be uh, W, which is 1200.5, 0, 0, okay, over sine of 90 degrees is equals to T1 over sine 60, right? Sine 60 degrees, right? So if we go further with that and do our, we isolate T1, so our T1 becomes, um, 1200.5 multiplied by sine of 60, right, degrees, okay, over um, sine 90, right. Okay, so what's our T1 in this case? Our T1, if we go to our calculator, it's gonna give us um, something of this sort, okay. So that's that, um, we can use that uh, operator. We can say, open bracket, uh, 1200, 0.5 uh, multiplied by sine uh, of 60 degrees, right? We close bracket, uh, divided by open bracket, uh, sine 90, right? Sine of 90 degrees, 
close bracket. Okay, so that is 1,000 uh, in, in 39.67, 1,000 in 39.66 uh, newtons. Now it becomes easy for us to determine the magnitude of T2, right? T2, if you go back again to our triangle forces, uh, you'd realize that T2 and 30 degrees are opposite. So if we apply the very same sine rule, it's gonna be T2, okay, over sine 30, okay, is equals to, you can even take, you know, T1 if you want, or we can go via the root of uh, W we over a uh, sine of uh, 90 degrees, which is still fine. Right, so if we isolate T2, okay, because now it becomes straightforward, it's gonna be 12, 0, 0 0.5, uh, sine 30, which is uh, 0, 0.5, okay, divided by sine of 90, right? Okay, well, that leaves us with T2 is equals to, if we go to that, um, it's gonna give us 1200.5, right? Open bracket, 1200.5 times sine of uh, 30 degrees, right? Close bracket, okay? Uh, divided by uh, sine 19, sine of 90 degrees, right? Okay, which is equals to 600.25, 600.25 newtons. So this is how uh, we could uh, determine uh, those. I think this was one of the, uh, the longest questions. There, there was a lot of application because we had to fuse in a little bit of maths, but make sure that the triangle of forces is correct before you go on to use either your, either your sine rule or your cosine rule. I think, uh, I think uh, that uh, rests our time in terms of... Uh, the first segment, okay yes. guys. Uh, that does wrap up the first segment. I hope that you are doing the questions with us so you understand where you're going wrong and then post your questions on our Facebook page. In the interim, go take a, have a glass of water, take a little bit of a breather, and we will see you on the flip side of this ad break.